All right, so now that we understand what estimating is, the different estimating types and the different type of construction costs, the next step is to actually estimate these costs. In this section, we'll run through the estimating process. So what are the steps we're going to go through to build our estimate? The diagram on the screen is basically all the components of an estimate that we'll need to calculate. The diagram actually has a special significance to me because as a brand new graduate, my manager drew it up on a whiteboard to explain the basics of cost estimating to me. It was actually one of the principal events that inspired me to start making these courses. A project's total costs are made up of direct and indirect costs. To calculate direct costs, we need to work out the labour, plant, material and subcontract costs it will take to complete all the construction deliverables. The indirect costs are all the other things we'll need in place to ensure the works get done, like management staff, site huts, security fencing and so on. Combine these together and we get our total project costs, to which we can add on our risk and opportunity, margin and corporate overheads, to get the price submitted to the client. So, let's break this down into a series of logical steps. To estimate any project's costs, there are four basic steps. Step one is to understand the project scope. We'll need to review the design, specifications, tender documents, and anything else provided to work out what we actually need to be doing. Next, we'll calculate direct costs. These are the costs of completing actual construction works. Then, once we know, or roughly know, what our direct costs are, we can work out our indirect costs. Steps two and three will occur iteratively. Then, in step four, we'll need to summarise, review and submit our estimate. We'll need to work out our risk and opportunity, margin and corporate overheads and add these to our costs to submit it to the client. We'll also need to get the estimate reviewed internally by our management staff. Before we get started on any pricing, the first step is to understand what we're being asked to build. We need to review and understand all the documents that define the project scope. We need to clearly understand what is being asked of us and what information has been provided. The information provided will all be in the tendered documents including a design or concept design, project specifications and any other relevant information that's been provided. The first step is going to be to simply digest all this information and work out what it means. Step 2 is then to calculate our direct costs. These are costs associated with completing all the project scope. So now we've got a good understanding of our project scope, we need to complete our work breakdown structure. We'll break the project down into component pieces to probably understand all the work to be done. Next, we'll need to establish our delivery methodology. What's the best way to deliver all this scope? Once we've worked out that, and know whether we'll be subcontracting or self-performing the works and the commercial arrangement, we can calculate our direct costs. We'll set up our pricing model and complete a quantity takeoff. We'll need to calculate labour, plant, material and subcontract rates, then estimate productivities to calculate total costs for each activity. These will then be combined to get our overall direct costs. Once we've worked out our direct costs, or in parallel with working out our direct costs, we can estimate our indirect costs. Indirect costs will vary from project to project, but there are three broad groups that we need to price. Overheads and management staff. So these are the salaries and compensation of all project managers, engineers, supervisors and support staff who will help deliver the project. Preliminaries, which is basically a broad category where all the other site running costs fall into, like site sheds, cleaners, security guards, site labour and more. This will vary depending on the project specifics, any insurances and security required, and any escalation or finance costs. So these are costs associated with delays in payment or increases in prices. Once we've priced our direct and indirect costs, we've got our total project costs. The next step is to summarise, review and submit our estimate to the client. So we need to first complete our risk and opportunity. We need to understand our known unknowns and unknown unknowns and work out what a reasonable amount of contingency funds are. We'll need to add a profit margin and corporate overheads to then calculate the price we submit to the client. We'll then complete a cash flow analysis to ensure we're cash positive and set up the pricing schedule in such a way. Before we submit the estimate to the client, 
the estimate will be reviewed by management who will want to be confident in its accuracy. They want to ensure that when we submit a $200 million bid to the client, our actual project costs aren't going to be $250 million and we're going to lose a lot of money. When everybody is happy, we'll fill out the client pricing schedule and submit the estimate to the client. So, what have we just achieved? Well, basically, we've taken a project scope and set of client requirements and we've turned that into a cost estimate. Before we finish up, I'll quickly touch on a couple of the software tools we'll use to create this estimate. We can complete our estimate in Excel, like I'll go through in this course, or we can use specialised estimating softwares, like Candy, which are purpose-built for creating construction cost estimates. Excel has basic functionality, and it's easy to use, but it's prone to user error. It's easy to mess up formulas and not realise. That's where purpose-built estimating softwares have advantages. While they're harder to use and have a steeper learning curve, they're set up to manage all the data created in an estimate, and once you get a handle of them, you're much less likely to make errors. Whatever you choose to use, estimating involves a ton of input data, performing extensive calculations and spitting out a cost. We want to make sure this process is full.